Welcome to the channel. In today's video, we are celebrating 60 years of one of the most successful big game cartridges ever made. Happy birthday, 7mm Remington Magnum. It has been 60 years. This cartridge was introduced in 1962. And so in today's video, we are going to look at its history, why it became so popular, and how it does versus the competition, and how it's become a top 10 hunting cartridge of all time. Hope you guys enjoy the video. To understand why the 7mm Rem Mag was made, we gotta go back a little bit. During the 40s, 50s, and 60s, you could say it was the Magnum craze. Weatherby, Winchester, Remington all came out with these belted Magnums that were based off the 375 H&H and for the most part, most of them were huge success. In 1958, Winchester introduced two belted Magnum cartridges. One was specifically made as an Alaskan cartridge, which you see in front of you, the 338 Winchester Magnum. And it is a 375 H&H shortened to fit a standard length action. So this case length is 2.50 inches long. And, uh, it's, it's quite the cartridge. And the other cartridge that was introduced in 58 uh, was supposed to be the lower 48 uh, ideal Magnum cartridge. Let me show you. The 264 Winchester Magnum. However, it didn't start out as well as the 338 Win Mag because this cartridge was known as a barrel burner. It didn't produce the velocities that Winchester was claiming, or it really just didn't take off very well, really. So let's fast forward four years, and in comes the seven millimeter Remington Magnum. Again, introduced in 1962. Let's talk about why it took off. Now I have four reasons why I believe Remington really hit a home run with this their new Magnum in 62, that is the 7mm Rem Mag. Number one, Remington came out with easily the most popular and one of the best rifles ever made uh, for the general public. That of course is the Remington 700 rifle. And this was the cartridge they introduced it in. And I think that was one of the biggest reasons why this cartridge succeeded when other 7 millimeters failed, like the Weatherby. The other reason is Remington brought a very affordable Magnum to the market. You know, the Weatherbys were quite expensive still back then, as they are today. And of course, the Holland & Holland Magnums were also very expensive. And so Remington brought a Magnum that the general population could afford. Third reason why this cartridge uh, started out so well was it had big green marketing behind it. And what do I mean by that? Well, Remington. You know, the Remington today is not what it used to be. Uh, Remington in the 60s and the previous and up until really the 2000s was a very successful ammo and rifle manufacturer. Uh, they just make great stuff, or at least they did. And so they had a lot of the marketing behind it to make this rifle successful or this cartridge successful. The last reason this cartridge I think really took off was how it compared to its competition when it came out. You know, the 300 Win Mag was not out back then and the Weatherbees were just too expensive. And so it competed with the 338 Win Mag, which for a lot of people was too much recoil. And it also competed with the 264 Win Mag, which just didn't live up to the hype and was a barrel burner. So Remington really, I mean, the parent case to the 7M Rem Mag is definitely the 375 H&H. But when you compare it to the Winchester Magnums, they're basically identical. Same height, just a different neck size. And so take the 264 Win Mag and neck it up to 7mm, and this is what you get, the Rem Mag. And so it offered something right in between the 64, 264 and the 338. Real quick, I just want to show you the ballistics, uh, the loading tables for the Rem Mag. You know, a, hunt, a popular hunting bullet for Rem Mag is 150 grain. 
when you hand load this guy, you can get it going 3,200 feet per second quite fast. A 160 grain, you can get it over 3,000 feet per second, close to 3,100. A 168 grain, again, over 3,000 feet per second. And you definitely can shoot 175 grain bullets. So in that, you, when you hand load it, you can get it over 2,900 feet per second. So very respectable magnum type performance for the REM mag. Now fast forward 60 years, and what does the 7mm REM mag compete against? Well, it competes against, on my left, the, th the classic 30-06 Springfield, and on my right, the 300 Winchester Magnum. And as you can see here, uh, the case length is about the same as the 30-06 and a little bit shorter than the 300 Winchester Magnum. So how does it compare to these two? Well. It's faster and flatter than a 30-06. Uh, it's, it's about 50 to 100 feet per second faster than a 30-06 with similar uh, bullets in the same weight. And then it's about 200 feet per second slower than the 300 Winchester Magnum. Now let's compare them all with similar bullets. Um, they're not going to have the same BC, so it's not a completely fair comparison. Uh, but a lot of hunters are going to be shooting in these weights, and so that's why I kind of picked it. And I'm also going to be using some of the top velocity that you can achieve in each of these cartridges, so you would have to hand load these to get these velocities. But with the REM mag, I'm using a 160 grain AccuBond and a muzzle velocity of 3,050 feet per second. The energy is quite good at 3,300 foot-pounds. Uh, recoil, I want you to remember this, is 23 uh, still pretty decent, especially when you compare it to the 30 6 and the 300 Win Mag. So again, we're going to go through this real fast, out to 400 yards, almost 2,400 feet per second, almost 2,000 foot-pounds of energy, and 23 inches of drop. Now I'm going to limit this to 500 yards, uh, pushing it out there for hunting at 500. I think that's a bit far. Uh, 2179 feet per second. Energy is still quite good at 1700 foot pounds and only drops 42.3 inches. Now let's compare it to the 30 out 6. The 30 out 6, we're using a 165 grain AccuBond and a muzzle velocity of 2950 feet per second. Energy is pretty close within almost 100 foot pounds of energy, so almost 3200. Recoil is 22. So the 7 REM mag and the 30 out 6 have about the same recoil. I'm not sure you're going to notice a difference. And so I give the advantage to the REM mag for performance, as you will see, with basically the same recoil. So let's take the 30 out 6 out to 400 yards. It's going 2,200 feet per second, and the energy is 17, well, almost 1,800 foot-pounds. So about a 200 foot-pound difference. Uh, 26 inches of drop, so a 3 inch drop, not a huge difference, but the 7 is definitely flatter. Out to 500, this is really limiting the 30 out 6, basically about as far as you're going to want to take a 30 out 6. Uh, it still has 1500 foot pounds though, and uh, 47 inches of drop. Now the 300 Win Mac with the same 165 grain bullet Acubon that we were using in the 30 out 6. And you can hand load that going 3250, maybe a little more. And the energy is quite a bit more than the other two at almost 3,900 foot pounds of energy. But you're also going to feel it quite a bit more at 28 pounds of recoil. So this thing uh, definitely will kick you. So let's take this out to 400 yards. At 400 yards, it's going 2460 feet per second. The energy is 2200 foot pounds of energy. And it is a bit flatter than the other two at 20 inches of drop. And so at 500, it's going 22, almost 2300, and 1900 foot pounds of energy. So about 200 more than the 7mm REM bag, and 400 more than the 30 out 6. And it has the less, least drop at 37 inches of drop. So no doubt the 300 Win Mag outperforms the 7mm REM mag. Uh, but at what cost? Well, it's going to cost you in recoil.
And so that's why a lot of people are picking the 7mm REM mag over the 300 wind mag is because it gets 30-06 recoil with a, a bit better performance. I have a good friend from high school that, uh, well, in college, he uh, was looking for a new big game hunting magnum cartridge. And he basically narrowed it down to the 7mm REM mag on the left and the 300 wind mag on the right. In fact, he did a college paper on which cartridge he was going to choose and, and why he chose it. And a few years back, he told me the reason he picked a 7mm Remington Magnum over the 300 Wind Mag was really for two reasons. One is that there was less recoil, and the next was he felt the 7mm Rem Mag was a better all-around hunting cartridge for deer and elk. Now, let me explain, or try to explain his reasoning, is he felt that the 300 Wind Mag was a bit much for deer. Now, obviously, it's great for elk, but he felt the Rem Mag was better suited for deer, and it was definitely good enough for elk. And so that was his reasoning for picking the 7mm Rem Mag. And I think it's a lot of the same reasons that it's still a top 10 hunting cartridge to this day. I really like this cartridge. I think it's here for the long haul. I don't think it's going anywhere, even with the newer 7mm cartridges coming out, like the 28 Nosler and the potential 7mm PRC. But I don't think those will ever dethrone the king of the 7mm Magnum, the 7mm Remington Magnum.